supposed to rain? Look stormy. I don't know. Hi everyone, I am here with a Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're going to be reading Acts chapter 23, uh, verses 11 through 35, where we left off yesterday. We'll be reading Psalm 3 and Proverbs chapter 18, verses 14 and 15. And the New International Version. Okay, let's see here. Layla, I think, um, I might be thinking of a different one, but Moi Layla, uh, Hava Me To Sulu. I probably said that all wrong. But, you know, I'm trying here and there to learn a few things. But anyway, um, I think I have another video to send for to you from the other from the other evening when we was coming home. So it's been a few days since I made the video, and I can't remember if I sent it to you. I know I sent you the one with the fog, right? When we was driving in the fog, it was really bad. Well, this time it was pouring down rain, and I was um, talking to you and showing you stuff, but. Um, yeah, I'll send it later just in case I didn't. I know I'm behind. I also got a video and birthday pictures of Sherm that I need to post. Um, like I said, I'm really behind. Some things have, you know, happened. And we just ain't got around to it yet. Could not make an appointment today, guys, even though it was Monday. Because I guess since... The 4th of July was yesterday, and it was on a Sunday and everything. The next day, which is today on Monday, they gave, uh, look, most places are closed for the day off. It's, uh, they're saying, the doctor's office, uh, one of the girls told me, it's a holiday. They're not here today. So, tomorrow, we should all be back in. And the one from... This one hospital was very, very rude. And she didn't believe what I say, and she acted like she didn't believe me. And she was like, hmm. And then she set me up with this doctor that I already knew who he was because my uncle went to him all the time and my niece had to go there before. I knew who this guy was. He's a podiatrist. I told her I needed an orthopedic surgeon, but she scheduled me with him because she thought I needed a podiatrist. She works at the desk. How does she know what I need? She ain't the one that was in the hospital. <laughs> she didn't have my paperwork, nothing. Very rude. So, of course, I'm not going to that. So, I'm thinking about going to... Um, Athens, which is a little little ways from here, but not too far, because I've never been there before. But I might also go to the the hospital that's related to the ER that I went to, because they said they had one there. This depends who would get me in, right? All right, so let's begin. What's wrong? So let's begin here. So, the plot to kill Paul, which is not the first and it won't be the last, right? This like with Jesus and mostly, if not all, the other disciples, a Christian. It's like it is in some countries still today. What's that noise out there? The heck's going on? What in the world? Paul transferred to Caesarea, and that's where we are ending Acts today. So let's get started. <clears throat> the following night, the Lord stood near Paul and said, Take courage, as you have testified about me in Jerusalem. 
so you must also testify in Rome. And you know, Paul always wanted to go to Rome. Oh, who's that little boy pushing a cart? <laughs> he had one of those little shopping carts, but it was about his size. Those kids never grow. For years, they're the same size. I don't get it. But really? anyway, huh? yeah, they're aliens. I don't know. <laughs> As you testify about me in Jerusalem, you know, Paul wanted to go to Rome and preach. And God will get him there one way or another. But, hey, it might not be the way you choose to go. Paul was going, you'll see. You'll see. I don't want to get the plot. If, if it don't tell it, I'll tell you. But you must also testify in Rome. So if God says that, Paul's definitely getting to Rome one way or another, right? The next morning, some Jews formed a conspiracy and bound themselves with an oath not to eat or drink until they had killed Paul. That's how much they wanted him dead. And all because he was trying to save them by teaching them and trying to get them to know that Jesus is the Son of God and everything and to, you know, be saved through him and become Christians. But some people even like still today do not believe it and do not want to hear it. Or they, they may believe in God but they don't want nothing to do with God. And they could be very mean and hateful, too. Some of my own family has been that way to me most of my life because of it. I've been called all kinds of names. Let's see here. Because they wanted to kill Paul, right? More than 40 men were involved in this plot. They went to the chief priests and the elders and said, We have taken a solemn oath not to eat anything until we have killed Paul. Now then, you and the Sanhedrin petition the commander to bring him before you on the pretext of wanting more accurate information about this case, about his case. We are ready to kill him before he gets here. But when the son of Paul's sister, so that would be his nephew, of course, heard of this plot, he went into the barracks and told Paul. Then Paul called one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the commander. He has something to tell him. So he took him to the commander. The centurion said, Paul, the prisoner, sent for me and asked me to bring this young man to you because he has something to tell you. The commander took the young man by the hand, drew him aside and asked, What is it you want to tell me? Makes me wonder how old the little boy was, right? You should take him by the hand and ask him that so, you know, you could picture him asking that so, you know, gently and lovingly like he was a father of a young child himself. He said, some Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul before the Sanhedrin tomorrow on the pretext of wanting more accurate information about him. Don't give in to them because more than 40 of them are waiting in ambush for him. They have taken an oath not to eat or drink until they have killed him. They are ready now, waiting for your consent to their request. The commander dismissed the young man with this warning. Don't tell anyone that you have reported this to me. Then, he called two of his centurions and ordered them, Get ready a detachment of 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen, and 200 spearmen 
to go to Caesarea at nine tonight. Provide horses for Paul so that he may be taken safely to Governor Felix. He wrote a letter as follows. Claudius Lysias to His Excellency, Excellency Governor Felix. Greetings. This man was seized by the Jews and they were about to kill him. But I came with my troops and rescued him for I had learned that he is a Roman citizen. I wanted to know why they were accusing him, so I brought him to their Sanhedrin. I found that the accusations had to do with questions about their law, but there was no charge against him that deserved death or imprisonment. When I was informed of a plot to be carried out against a man, I sent him to you at once. I also ordered his accusers to present to you their case against him. So the elders carrying out their orders took Paul with them during the night and brought him as far as Antipatris. Antipatris. The next day they let the cavalry go on with him while they returned to the barracks. When the cavalry arrived in Caesarea, they delivered the letter to the governor and handed Paul over to him. The governor read the letter and asked what province he was from. Learning that he was from Sicilia, he said, I will hear your case when your accusers get here. Then he ordered that Paul be kept under guard in Herod's palace. And that is where we're stopping with Acts today. So it didn't say right now, but I guess you'll see later on um, how Paul's going to get to Rome. So I don't know whether to tell you or not, but let me just say Paul gets to Rome as being a prisoner. He doesn't get to go to Rome of his own free will but as a prisoner. That's all I'm going to say. Alright, now let's read Psalm 3. It's a small psalm. It's only got eight verses. I'm sorry if you can't understand me sometimes because of the way I talk. I try my best. It was so embarrassing. What was it last night? There's this one girl who works at a gas station, a restaurant here, that's open 24 hours every single day, including Christmas. But anyway, at night, she always works there, and she is so mean and grouchy. Like, I try to say stuff to make her, you know, feel better, but whatever you say does not work with this girl. And no, she just ain't having a bad night. She acts like this every single time you call there at night. And I was calling there last night and um, to place an order because she wanted some chicken strips. And um, what was it? And I told Sherm, I said, I hope she doesn't answer. But I knew she would because it was, you know, it was nighttime. And she answered. And I was telling her the order. And, of course, you know, I tried my best to talk. And um, then she asked the name, and I said, uh, Crabtree. And she said, what? And she said, uh, uh, Peterson. I said, Crabtree. She said, spell it. I said, I'm sorry, I just um, got my teeth pulled. She said, spell it. So I spelled it to her, and then she's like, well, 40 minutes. Did she know the name when you got there? What did she say? I always have to tell them the name. So rude. So rude. I thought, you know, me telling her that I'm sorry, I, you know, just got my teeth pulled. She'd be like, oh, that, you know, okay, that's why I can understand you. You know, that's fine. 
No, she was very rude. All right, guys. Psalm 3 is a psalm of David when he fled from his son Absalom. Again. <laughs> so yes, he fled from his son because Absalom was literally going to kill David, his father. And it wasn't the first uh, person. He actually had his brother, his half-brother, He and his friends uh, killed him. And David was very mad. This might have been the time, you know, they were fighting about it and Absalom was out to kill David. You know, Absalom wanted to be king. He thought he was going to be king when David died. His dad died. But Solomon became king. Okay, anyway, let's continue. Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. But you, Lord, are a shield around me. My glory, the one who lifts my head high. I call out to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy mountain. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear, though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. You think David's sons, daughters, all of them, would have took after him you know he would have taught them these things and you know they had like Bathsheba she was Solomon's mother but Absalom and his sister Tamar they had a different mother and you know it's so on and it was said of Absalom Absalom and Tamar who were um, full-blooded um, brother and sister King David's children that they were very handsome and beautiful. So, they were good looking children, those two. Don't know what the other ones looked like. But, you know, that doesn't matter anyway. But I could go into the story why Absalom had his brother killed or killed him. But, you know, let's just get the Bible reading done so we can get on to the Bible study and then the Bible lesson. Okay, so we're ending today's Bible reading with Proverbs chapter 18, verses 14 and 15, which says, The human spirit can endure in sickness, but a crushed spirit who can bear? It literally fills crushed spirit who can bear like when you've lost someone you really love like it literally feels like your heart has been ripped out of your chest and you'll never have a life again you don't even want to live anymore I've been there I know Sherm's been there he's still there a lot of the times and it's very sad and no matter what I try to do it might make him feel better you know at the moment but then another day so please keep him in your prayers please keep Layla and um, her son Mel in your prayers and let me finish this last verse here and we'll continue the heart of the discerning acquires knowledge, for the ears of the wise seek it out. Um, please keep Jimmy Myers in your prayers. Um, 
Abby Myers, Cindy Welsh, um, let's see, Jim Welsh, Dora Carper. I don't got my book out, so I'm trying to re remember. Um, Garnet Boyer and Jim Mitchell. Please keep them in your prayers. Elizabeth Jeffries and Judy Thompson. Um, Mally, my sister. Um, sounds like she's doing better. Um, she had a picture of a shot on the counter uh, here a while back and it said, you know, saving my life or whatever. And I'm like, you know, what's going on? And she said it was the shot. She told me what it was called, but I can't remember. I think it started with a V. But she said it's to make her stay off drugs. And she told me yesterday, I believe, that she got a job, a full-time job. And um, so if that's the case, you know, good for her. And I hope she continues on that path. So please keep her in your prayers for her to continue in that path. And, of course, for all my nieces and nephews, please keep them in your prayers. And is that the most one for me? All right. So I guess that is the prayer request for tonight, and that is the Bible reading. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. <laughs> Bye, guys. God bless. You be careful.